SMT Nation, we back. Nation, we're tearing apart the investor conference from T-Mobile, looking at different elements that were emphasized during the conversation between T-Mobile executives and the investors. And there's some interesting things that we needed to discuss, and this one I feel is very important, and that is how much money T-Mobile is spending on the network. Let's discuss it here in today's video, as it's an important piece of how good the network can actually be. It's tied to the money they spend. Let's discuss it here in today's video. I'll uh, go ahead and post the Business Wire article here uh, in regards to T-Mobile's 2023 outlook, which they provide a lot of the metrics from today's video. Uh, let's discuss it here. All right, link will be in the description box. Ways to support us can be found there as well. Don't forget, you can help out the channel in lots of ways. Like and share this video. And then if you're new here, hit the subscribe button and then turn on the bell notifications to never miss an upload from the SMT. All right, folks, so here is where I'm going with today's commentary. T-Mobile's network is very modern. Their tower sites got most of their assets up there on, on most sites. And for the most part, they've got lots of capacity available to them. They got the 5G stimulus package with the T-Mobile and Sprint merger. They've taken advantage of it to a, to a great degree. And, you know, you look at T-Mobile's place within the industry and you know, the, the claim to 5G dominance is there. You know, they lead in network performance in regards to speed. They hold a lot of spectrum assets. And like I said, the network is modern. Uh, you know, the, in the investor conference, executives touted the tri-band standalone 5G network in which competitors basically still have to catch up. So maintaining a 9 to $10 billion capex feels adequate for them. And I'm sure that's probably good for investors they want to see the capex relax a little bit i think peak t-mobile i think they spent a few more billion you know for for one or two years uh, and that was during the whole process you know post merger as they built out the 5g uc layer across the country right so you've got that part you've got obviously satellite services which you know spacex and starlink is kind of gonna you know put up some of their wireless assets so that t-mobile can have connectivity and for their customers in some places where they don't have the terrestrial network right and uh one of the indications of this in terms of the progress good disclosure is that the public beta for that satellite service to to consumers smartphones is expected to roll out this year specifically they said the public beta would be available by the end of the year so within testing currently we know that the data works video calls have worked texting and calling has worked Obviously, they'll have to densify more satellites with their spectrum assets and putting up gear. That'll be an ongoing project. They launch satellites all the time over at SpaceX. So, you know, that's something that we're monitoring. So you've got a nine to $10 billion CapEx. You've got a, a lead in standalone 5G networking spectrum assets and all those things. T-Mobile feels good about where they are compared to the competitors. So they're saying Verizon's in catch-up mode, AT&T's in catch-up mode relative to 5g pops you know points of presence it's true right they're way out ahead in respect to that but i think what's what's sometimes overlooked is that you always got to build ahead you know you just you can't let things kind of you can't be reactionary right you always have to kind of be proactive so my only concern is is a nine to ten billion dollar capex in 2024 enough to keep them proactive or is it more of a situation where in a year or two they'll look back and say maybe we you know we should have spent more you know so we could have stayed ahead and and gotten ahead or whatever what may have you you know so it's like you know verizon's coming uh they're moving so fast you know with their 5g ultra wideband build you know at&t is building at a decent pace a little bit behind verizon but there it will come a point where you know, they're going to be indistinguishable. You know, basically by the end of this year, all the networks are going to basically perform the same relative to like mid-band 5G. But what we still haven't seen from T-Mobile is any dedication to a, a national CRAN strategy, small cells, uh, or millimeter wave. So, and that might be the difference between the CapEx accelerating or the CapEx staying put. So these are questions I think that are worth considering. We got some good updates there on the network and the spending. A lot of good things and interesting things happening there. What's your guys' take on the satellite rollout? 
interested or is it more of a nothing burger? What do you think about the, the nine to 10 billion spend in the direction of the network? And what do you think about kind of where they stand relative to their competitors? Right, Verizon's at 18 billion, uh, AT&T's around 21, 22 billion. And then, you know, T-Mobile comes in at nine to 10. You think that's gonna be good enough? Sound off in the comment section below. You all the voice of the people, the SMT Nation. Let your voice be heard.